Hello, thank you for joining me today. I am Kathy, a health transformation consultant for the health plan, and I'm going to share some information with you about post-traumatic growth. As I go through this presentation, I want to be mindful that many of us have or continue to be experiencing trauma and high levels of stress. This puts us all on various levels of healing, which will influence our perspective, what information we are able to take in and how we see ourselves. For some, you may find yourself not in a place where you can even see post-traumatic growth as a possibility. And for others, you may be able to identify with this and say, this is me. Just know that wherever you are in your experience is okay. I would ask that as you spend this time with me, listen for the hope and the possibility in the information that I am sharing, and please remember to seek out support throughout your employee assistance program, counselor, or primary care doctor as needed. So when you think about something traumatic, what comes to mind? For some, you may have thoughts of a death of a loved one, some form of abuse, a serious medical diagnosis, or natural disaster. Do you ever wonder how someone even survives some of the experiences that they've gone through and how some of these people, and maybe even you, not only survived, but seemed to find new meaning in their life? That's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to introduce you to the theory of post-traumatic growth, including the five areas or profiles, and then share with you how we can possibly apply this to our own situations. When we have something that's traumatic or tragic that happens to us, we just naturally change. Whether it's abuse, the death of a child or spouse, an unprecedented event like 9-11, we do not come out of the experience as the same person afterwards. These events lead to high levels of stress and complex emotions, including grief, and cannot not only impact our personal relationships, but can lead to long-term physical and mental health consequences, but not always. Consider this, if all we talked about is the harsh, harsh impact of trauma, how do we ever move forward? This is where the theory of post-traumatic growth comes in. Not only can it be an anchor of hope, but it can become the life raft that moves us forward. The concept of growth and after trauma has been around from the beginning of time, which is documented in liter literature, mythologies, and religious writings. In the 1990s, psychologists Richard Tedesh and Lawrence Calhoun developed the psychological theory of post-traumatic growth. Their research of trauma and long-term outcomes showed that following the initial distress and decline in emotional functioning, two-thirds of people in the study experienced what they called post-traumatic growth and showed a capacity to thrive after their adversity. Post-traumatic growth is the positive changes that are experienced by some trauma survivors out of their struggle to cope. We have an incredible ability to endure suffering, not only called upon calling upon our resiliency and survival strategies to cope and heal, but we also sometimes experience a renewed sense of purpose where we never thought we could. So keep in mind though, post-traumatic growth is not a direct result of tr the trauma, but it is related to how the individual struggling, how, how the individual struggles because of the trauma. So as I mentioned, it isn't something that is experienced by everyone, and it by no means diminishes the significance or the impact of the trauma and loss. Post-traumatic growth isn't a way of fixing what is broken or to rush somebody through an experience and to have them just get over it. When someone experiences a trauma, they suffer. Life as they know it evaporates in a blink of an eye. Anyone that has been there will tell you that there is really no going back to what was. We can only forage ahead and create a new normal. All of this must be at a pace of the, pace of the person going through it. Whether you have a shared experience or are a bystander to someone's trauma, it's an individual journey distress, perhaps throughout their life, certain personality traits and characteristics that make some more likely to experience post-traumatic growth. People that are more open and more likely to reconsider their belief systems and extroverts are more active in seeking out connections with one another's when experiencing trauma. Optimism reduces our feelings of hopelessness when, they're, when things feel out of control. This isn't placating optimism, 
uh, optimism grounded in the pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of thing. This is the kind of optimism where you not only recognize the severity of the situation, but you are able to confront the reality of the impact that it has. And then there's resilience, which is a different construct than post-traumatic growth. Resilience is a personality quality where we bounce back from stress and sorrow, whereas post-traumatic growth can bring new insights, a heightened awareness, and a different way of being after exposure to a trauma, which takes a lot of time and a lot of work. The researchers developed the post-traumatic growth inventory, which is a self-report scale and looks at five individual factors. This is one of the most valid and reliable resources for evaluating pers um, personal growth following a trauma. A high total score suggests the person has undergone post-traumatic growth, and then by looking at the breakdown of the five areas, which we're going to review, the individual can see where the predominant changes or change occurred. So let's take a look at the five areas. So the first one is relating with others. I think of this in two ways, how we relate to others and how others relate to us, uh, to us. Both ways imply a level of trust, trust in self that you are emotionally available to connect in an empathetic and compassionate way with someone um, and trust in others that they will regard you with empathy and compassion. Depending on the type of trauma someone experiences, it is much harder to trust people and find support to heal, but when we take the risk to offer support or to accept it, it strengthens our social ties. The second area is new possibilities in life. So finding a new path in life that wouldn't have been possible if the trauma hadn't occurred, becoming more giving, braver to do things that never thought you possibly would do, or doing things that would be out of reach or things that you would put off, reprioritizing our values and time commitments. The third is personal strength. When people experience a greater sense of motivation, self-reliance or self-acceptance, recognition and appreciation for personal resiliency and the personal strength to go through the hard work of surviving the ripple effects of a trauma. There may be an awareness of greater wisdom or maturity, more attunement to personal values as the focus shifts to from what matters to the individual. The fourth area is appreciation of life, being more present and finding value in the day-to-day -day experiences, having a deeper appreciation of the little things and savoring small moments, being open to different perspectives and being okay with different views. You may not get as rankled about some of the things that used to seem important, and there may be a greater appreciation for some of the things we used to take for granted. And the fifth area is spiritual change. Feeling like there's a better understanding of spiritual matters and de de the development of a greater sense of harmony with the world. A person may experience a readjustment to or a revision of their spiritual beliefs. So when we have something horrible that happens to us, we must first figure out how to just cope with getting out of the bed, quite frankly, and just making it through the day. As we continue to go forward, we begin to look at how to start living beyond just getting by. We do this by being brave and considering what meaning and purpose and life satisfaction would look like. We take the risks by noticing if there's any positive reactions to the event, which does not mean that we're glad the trauma happened. In a sense, it's self-compassion as you do the hard work of taking care of all the feelings and emotions that surface when the trauma and with the trauma and exploring new ways of coping, which leads to the discovery of underlying strengths, connection with other, and maybe even ways of giving back. Because we are human and, and change and loss surround us, inevitably each of us will experience a trauma. When something bad happens, our brains will try to make sense of it. And there are some things that happen that really cannot be explained. Knowing that post-traumatic growth is a possibility gives us the opportunity to see trauma not as a devastating ending, but as a way of finding courage, hope, and strength as we find meaning where we thought we couldn't. Thank you for joining me and be well.